something that's important to know about the slough is that these types of slow waters have been here for millennia. So before we had levees and before we had some of the other implements that have come into place, this was all part of the natural floodplain of the Columbia River. And these slow waters were great places for transportation and for movement. So Native Americans who lived here would use this as a safe place to travel from place to another. They were great for, you know, fishing, which people still do today, do fish in the slough. You know, they were great for collecting different kinds of plants that are found in this sort of environment. So, Although we are in a very, as you can see, very urban environment, we're also in a very natural place that's been here for thousands of years, which is a pretty cool thing. In the early 1900s, this is great farmland because, of course, the river had brought in lots of silt and great dirt, and the farmers didn't want to be flooded out, so they started building the levee, and that's Marine Drive is the levee, and that defines the northern part of our watershed, and then the southern part of our watershed is mostly defined by the Alameda Ridge, and that was created by the Missoula floods. So a dynamic system and really change because when they stopped the flooding, we kind of confined the waterways, and now um, half of the slough, which is about 19 miles long, is really managed by the drainage district. But the other half, the lower half, coming up from the Willamette, is um, tidally influenced, as we are here in Portland, just a little bit and it's not surrounded by levees on both sides. Being in, north, in northeast Portland, Gresham and Fairview is a very um, urban, industrialized area, and so we had lots of issues. Um, so working here at Whitaker Ponds, um, which is a Portland Park site, but it was a very degraded kind of, um, not so much a garbage dump, but a kind of where people brought their stuff and it just accumulated um, over the years and a lot of tires and debris and things from construction were left here and it was all cleaned up, but the land was, had you know, basically no trees and very little native vegetation and we worked a lot to um, kind of working out from the ponds to plant um, riparian areas along the waterways that both the Whitaker Slough is here as well as the two Whitaker Ponds and then now have done some plantings up in the, um, some of the open areas as well. The reality of it is that a lot of people that we serve don't have the means or the time to get out somewhere far afield. They may not have access to a car. They may not have you know, those options. So if we can show them that they can walk down a street and come into a natural area like this, that's you know, a very easy, accessible place. And then they have a place of solace, a place of calm, a place you know, to kind of relax in the midst of our very urban area. So I think having, preserving these natural urban spaces are, are really important. My main program that I run is our SLU School Education Program that serves students from kindergarten all the way up through college. Through those programs we do classroom presentations. We actually go into schools and provide free classroom science enrichment programs and we also bring them out into the field. So we do a lot of restoration work, so restoring some of our local natural habitat. We do science inquiry out in the field, so they're using real water quality testing kits and magnifying lenses, all those tools that scientists use, but getting young kids to be introduced to them. That behavior helps me identify it, and it's this one. And flying around here are the really bright, bright blue damselflies. People call them dragonflies, but they're actually damselflies. Yeah, they're cousins. They're both in the same order. Yeah. And then in the spring each year, we actually get students out on the water. So we do canoe trips with them, too. The event you guys are doing today, Explorando, uh, it's bilingual, multicultural. You said that you've been trying to focus on that aspect of it pretty much since the beginning of, of the event. Why is, why is that something that you guys have been focusing on, trying to bring out? Well, we feel it's really important that when you look at the watershed and the residents who live within the watershed, that we're doing our very best to serve them. Explorando is a focus event. It's really looking at the Latino community and, you know, we have everything bilingual so that it's very accessible for people who, you know, might have limited English um, speaking skills. We have another event later in the summer that we run with in conjunction with the Portland Water Bureau that's a groundwater, pirate-themed groundwater festival, Aquifer Adventure. You know, when you look at the larger picture of what's going on in our world, you know, we, we do have limited resources. So if we can help students learn how to protect the resources we have and start that at a young age, then it becomes a natural thing they just do. And it's, it's not a lesson that needs to be learned, it's just part of how they live. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> the beaver slap.
I'm Tyler Gill, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today.